You're with Julian on the Brown Note and our review of Monkey Man. Now, Dev Patel has had one wild ride as an actor. He's still only 34. Can you believe his debut film is Slumdog Millionaire? It always really winds me up when people look back on films like that and say they were never worthy of winning multiple Oscars or becoming a huge success. This was a $12 million budget film that was designed to go direct to video that was shown at a few festivals and people went nuts over and ended up earning something like $600 million and winning Best Picture. Now, people say, oh, you shouldn't have won it. This is in the same realm as Titanic. It's not a film like Avatar that just dazzles with technical ability. These were human stories that really moved people and brought them into the magic of cinema. And I don't agree that Sundog Millionaire is, isn't one of the best films of the century. It's certainly, whatever flaws it has, uh, from another Danny Boyle film, uh, related film, whatever flaws it has, it's got this amazing construct and emotional hit um, in watching it. Um, he had one of the most amazing debut one and twos in history. Slumdog Millionaire was like in the stratosphere and he followed it up with The Last Airbender. It was like... The, it was like going from naught to 100 in 2.4 seconds and then from 100 to naught in one second, uh, which really destroyed much of his career. <clears throat> a terrible film if you've never seen it. And it's been a slow road back, but he's really coming back now. He's only 34 years old. So he did the best exotic Marigold Gold Hotel, which was like a, you know, a warm, fluffy film. And as then actually really I thought came back in 2016 with The Man Who Knew Infinity which was a massive could have been film about um, I forget his uh, uh, Srinvasa Ramanujan who is uh, regarded as one of the most naturally talented mathematicians in history uh, an Indian guy who went to came ended up in Cambridge University in, in like before the First World War um, great performance, a film that should have been better than it was. And then Lion uh, got a lot of attention. And Hotel Mumbai, one of the most crucifying films to watch about terrorism. Astonishing film. I think these are all Australian films. Um, but really, I saw coming back into the critical four with The Green Knight a few years back as a lead actor in that. And um, Monkey Man, what a film. So this is a being portrayed. He's not only the star of this film, but he is writer and director as well. So it's his directorial debut. And what a step up it is. It's a film that's being called The Indian John Wick. And it is The Indian John Wick. <coughs> it stars um, Dev Patel. And we see in flashbacks that... His mother was very poor, living in a makeshift encampment, and rich businessmen in India came through and massacred them all. He's now an adult, desperate to try and get a job in a posh hotel. And we find out, because the clientele of this brothel slash hotel, uh, with its posh nightclub and uh, very well-to-do uh, businessmen and policemen, were responsible for his mother's death. So he's trying to worm his way in there so he can kill the man responsible for setting his mum on fire. <laughs> now, it's a, it's, a, like, it's a fairly old story to show. I've, I've spoken at length about these films where you get someone trying to pay back powerful criminal organisations and work their way up the ladder. It's a very old story. And John Wick did it in the very first John Wick film, uh, brilliantly um, and this one does as well but it also throws in a number of curveballs along the way where the, the screenplay goes in different directions so we get um, this at the start um, the Dev Patel characters basically as low as you can get in India on the streets virtually and he's working as a fighter in a the lowest rent UFC you've ever seen where he wears a monkey mask. I'm sure it gave a few people a bit of a, oh, what's this film? It's called Monkey Man. But he wears a monkey mask in the ring. And he basically throws fights to 
give betting odds to the people he works for. So he just gets regularly beaten to a pulp. So it's it goes some way in explaining how tough the guy is uh, and how good he is at fighting. And he gets a job in the hotel, in this posh hotel brothel, uh, and befriends... Is it Sikanda Care? No, I think it is. No, it's not here. Uh, so Beta Dooley Parlor? Yeah, it's her. Now, she is absolute knockout. She's definitely someone that's going to be seen in Western films. She plays a prostitute who in sort of gives him a window into this world. She's very badly treated by extremely obnoxious, very wealthy uh, and dangerous, often policemen, but gangsters as well. And she's basically... She walks in this world and sort of sort of brings him into it. And she's an absolute stunner and really good character as well. Um, so he, he, he gets on the ground floor of the hotel, working in the kitchens, taking out the rubbish and foments his plan. And much of the movie is his plan, which you're half a party to fomenting and his previous life being told in flashback. I thought this was great. This is such an exciting film. It's very, very, very violent. Um, and it is. Uh, it deserves the John Wick comparisons. He's great. Uh, as he presents a very stoic and interesting character uh, who goes down tangents and, you know, not everything goes his way and he ends up in very bad situations. Uh, so it's not like he walks in and wins every time at all. Uh, and there's some very good set pieces with regards to the the violence and destruction going on. Not everything makes complete sense. He does um, in in the action world. He does spend a large part of the film when he's at his lowest with the transgender community in India, who are legally defined as a race of people, uh, and it's a, a whole variety of these people that that sort of live in these communes and worship these gods and um, are equivalent in some ways to transgender people in the West, but not entirely, um, and are often pushed into the worst parts of society, but they are legally defined as a race of people in India, and there's three million of them, and they have their own temples, and they're often you know, right in the margins of society and pushed into work like sex work and often like drugs and so on and there's a whole variety of it it's a really interesting world uh, and he sort of get reaches his low point and spends some time being picked up by them some of the stuff that happens when he comes back and starts you know taking them down is a little bit incredulous but at the same time the uh the fact that it is this very prominent western film which is mostly in english but not all uh, it, it can be taken as an English film, English language film. Uh, and it's interesting that Dev Patel has this bookend to his career because there was a lot of controversy about this British film, Slumdog Millionaire, focusing on the very marginal people of India. Um, again, that's happening here. Uh, and this time around, it's focusing on the, the people at the very bottom in India and then the people at the very, the obscene wealth at the very top. Beautifully shot as well. I don't know who shot it. Uh, but you get some amazing, Sharon Mir, some amazing cinematography and the music as well by Jed Kurzel is extremely good. Um, the action sequences are completely bone crunching and very well done. Um, and there's some interesting political like the the fact that the film has not yet been given a permit to be shown in india a lot of people are saying is down to the fact that it is in some ways referencing the current populist government of india it certainly references charlotte political charlatans who are basically businessmen feathering their own nests preying on people lower down the economic ladder than them by using nationalism and religion uh, and I don't think that will have gone over very well with the government in India at all, given the enormous popularism angle that that government in India goes for. Um, so I think one of the stars came out and said there's no reason for it not to be shown in India. It's all a big lie. It was down to some things. But I can see how they would find it problematic to show. 
uh, it would be very rabble rousing and perhaps not in a way that the government would want. Um, so there's this massive political angle to the film as well. It's got a lot of substance to it. It's not just like one guy was ripped off and he left for dead and coming back. There's this huge political angle and the characters have substance. Uh, it's very interesting and it threw me a few times snaking along in how the screenplay would progress. So I'm going to give Monkey Man a very, very solid 8 out of 10. And if you like the John Wick films, absolutely fantastic. Or Extraction is better than probably, certainly Extraction 1, uh, possibly Extraction 2. It's certainly on a par with Extraction 2. I'm going to give it Monkey Man. And the rebirth of Dev Patel is reaching Titanic proportions, an 8 out of 10.